And let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. Glory to God. Look, welcome to the house of God in the name of Jesus. And I believe that God has brought us here so that he can operate within us. Whoever you are, my friend, wherever you might be, any kind of friend, right? It doesn't matter. God will certainly use us powerfully because it is written here in his word. I want to start reading to you Psalm number 59, verse number 17. My friends, Psalm 59, verse 17, it says, To you, O my strength, I will sing praises. And then he explains it. For God is my defense, my God of mercy. God had rescued him in such a way that, that he said, He is my strength. He's given him power to overcome his enemies. This faith that we need to have it. It doesn't matter what sort of evil is surrounding us, which has risen up against us, which is trying to destroy you. Take refuge in God. Take from God all of the power. And you then will certainly be able to fight against this evil power, power against this evil oppression, which might be in your body with some type of disease or weakness, which might be in your soul with a sad feeling, with melancholy, with despair, with depression, or which might be in your spirit, making you have bad thoughts, any sort of thoughts. And God, He can transform you completely. So He said, To you, O my strength, I will sing praises. Why did He say that? Because He knew how important it was to sing praises to God. But you shouldn't sing them without feeling them. You have to sing praises to enter into God's heart and make God bless you. When I see these, I say to myself now, so I need to sing praises to God as well. Even if everything looks gloomy, obscure, storms are everywhere, I can't miss this opportunity to take God into my life. And he explained why he would sing praises, for God is my defense. He would start a battle knowing that nothing would happen to him because God would protect him from these accusations, from the enemy arrows, from the power of his enemies. Apply this to your life and you will be very successful. We should even write this down and carry it in our wallets so that we never forget. He is my God of mercy. He is the one who has mercy on me, that undeserved favor which I need. I need that help. Shall we pray now in the name of Jesus? Father, many who are now praying with me are like David. They need, O oh God, to win. May you be their strength, so they will sing your praises. To you who are the God of mercy, O oh God. Father, come here. Fight for this person and help them. I will bless them in your name. In the name of Jesus, be paralyzed all of enemies work in your life and come out now in the name of Jesus and you say amen let's now folks see a miracle a blessing that a person has received in one of my services roll this VT will you what has God done I fell right in front of the church when I left the church I fell and the tibia of my knee was torn apart I was going to undergo surgery and then the doctor asked me to do a magnetic resonance test and so I did it and he told me I had to see another specialist and then I determined that I would not do the surgery and today I came here and I felt a snap in my knee. How long ago was that? Five years. Five years ago she fell down here in front of the church and the ligament it was torn apart that's right tibia's ligament tibia's i came walking down just now and you felt a snap i felt a snap right when there's a snap it's to tear something apart <laughs> but god made it snap to join it back together to join it back how did you god. walk before the prayer like this leaning on a lady who comes here pretend i'm that lady how are you leaning on her i was walking like this now walk normally now because you are healed only jesus hey jesus you are so beautiful jesus and doesn't he deserve a round of applause, folks? I was, at that time, she told me I was impressed. Because when something rips apart, we may hear a snap. I mean, we've got two bones here, the tibia and the fibula, you know? 
and the tibia bone ripped apart. It snapped. Well, I don't know if it snapped, but when it got back together, it made a snap. It was as if God was saying, I will make it snap whenever I want. I've torn the evil operation apart. Do you have any type of problem in any sector of your life? Let's believe that God will make it snap in your life. He will tear apart the evil power and he will bind the blessing of the Lord. And he really does it. And let's see another beautiful testimony. Roll it, will you? What's your name? Pain, pain. 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 Yes. Really? Have they named you that? Don't I guess. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> Were your parents drunk that day when they I named guess, you? I guess. I guess he was. Isn't it, Maria? It's only no, pain. No, it's Mary Payne. No, it's yes. it's Mary Payne. And now you're going to be Mary uh, without pains. Mary yes. without pains. What did you have in your hands? My thumb. I couldn't even move it like this. How long has it been like that for? It's been like that for six months. Now you don't feel any pain. Go on. I am healed in the name of Jesus. What's your name? Mary, Mary Payne. Oh, it's Maria without pains. <laughs> Do it like this with your finger, Maria. That's right. Does it hurt? No, it doesn't. Then you may say, go now. Okay. When they ask your name, you should say, Maria without pains there. So let's applaud Jesus, right, folks? <laughs> now let us praise our God, listening to his word in the right way. But before, I want you to watch another service I have done in Belo Horizonte. This was a little while ago. Uh, you will understand what God has done. Roll this VT for me, will you? Those who love the Lord God are always joyful and ready to do the will of God, regardless of the circumstances. When I gave up uh, the dream of being a doctor, which I've had since I was a boy, when I read the book Healing the Sick and Casting Out Devils in 1968, I understood that God wanted me to be a preacher. I said, God, don't do this to me, Lord God. Let me go to Moscow. I was granted a scholarship. I am poor. My dad was a bricklayer. I said, God, please. The struggle lasted for about two hours. Let me go to Moscow because I'm going to serve you because you know why I want to be a doctor. I don't want to be rich. I want to help people. When I said that, he spoke to me in my heart. With my power, you will heal more people than ever as a doctor, and you will also take them to heaven. It was said and done. Dr. R. R. Suarez is powerfully used by God, and wonders take place. Many people take hold of the blessing, and the love of God overflows. How about your ear? Which one was bad? This was bad. For how long? It's been around two years since it started If to we go covered bad. this one, did you hear or did you not? Very little. Did people have to shout? They would say to me, you're deaf, you're deaf. Then cover this one, because I'll shout a lot here. city were you born in? Don Joaquin. What is your mother's name? Dolores. And the name of your grandmother? Her name was Modesta. What is your profession? What do you do for a living? I'm a bricklayer. It's over. At the time of prayer, I couldn't hear anything. It was just a buzz in my ear. And now for the glory of God, I can hear. Can you hear me now? Before the prayer, if I covered this one, you couldn't hear. I heard very little, but now Now you I can, can hear everything, so cover it very well. What's your name? Gilmar Aparecido. And what's your father's name? Sebastian Daluz. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have, I have two. Gilmar, you may go and be happy. I have been hearing a lot of noises in my ear for a long time, around two years, and it's very annoying because my kids start talking and I think they're whispering. I can't hear them. It's like they're whispering. Look that way now. What's your name? Nisi. Can you bake a cake? Yes. What's the best cake you can bake? I prefer my orange cake. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. We have to change the subject, right, folks? I heard a strong buzz in my ear. It sounded like a train inside my ear, and I couldn't hear properly. Sometimes my husband would talk to me, I wouldn't Are you answer. deaf, woman? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know that? Because every man says that when his wife is hard of hearing. I said to him, I can't hear, my dear, what you're saying. I'm calling you, and you won't answer me. <laughs> this one was a good one. Right. Cover the good one. Look that way. What's your husband's name? José Pedro. Were you blessed before coming here today or was it here when you came here? I told him I was coming here today to receive my blessing. <laughs> you received it. And I have received it. God has given me my blessing. 
Amen. Go on, little sister, in the name of Christ. Indeed, God is the doctor of doctors. And a round of applause for Jesus, right, folks? Look, how does this happen, Dr. Suarez? This depends on how much you trust God. I said I was going to talk about King David again, and what I will say now, it will help you. Because David said exactly that. Psalm number 62, verses 7 and 8. And it says, Listen, in God is my salvation and my glory. When we are in touch with the word of our God and we start to have experience for letting ourselves be used by the Lord, for using the authority of Christ and for seeing that it works, your faith starts to build up always and also your confidence in the Lord. And then, then you gather people up when you feel the touch of God because that's one thing you should know. Um, Jesus said, he said this, without me, you can do nothing. You shouldn't invent something. I will now pray for this and God will heal everyone. I might be embarrassed. So of course I'll pray for everyone, but to say a specific prayer and to bring people forth and many more people had their ears healed there, but testimonies were only these ones, which we've shown. So I will pray. I am sure God will do it, but why? because he has already used me so many times and every touch of his I obey and it's impossible to fail. His touch you can obey because it is your salvation. God is not your failure or your doom. He would never say anything that he wouldn't do himself. Placing you in an embarrassing situation. You call people, they pray and nothing then happens. So David had this, this, this distrusting God and he said in God is my salvation and in God is your salvation as well if you felt it by the word that testimony that is the testimony from the mouth of God if it spoke to you hold on to it in my salvation and my glory your glory is in the Lord it is your success all of your fulfillment it is not outside of him no if God has touched you you can go the rock of my strength. I mean, the strength was enough, but he was the rock of his strength. Where you can seek shelter because nobody can break into it, nor nobody can get to you. Compared to a very big rock where there was a cave where they could hide and nobody would get near them because they would defend themselves always. Very well armed with his men. My brother, we don't have men around us. We have the angels of God. And our strength, it, it is indestructible and undeniable. And the Lord is the rock of this strength. Our strength is in God, our shelter, our safe place. Even if the enemy tries very hard, he won't be able to get us. But you have to take a word like this and start to pray over it, to meditate, to seek God, until you feel that this is God talking to you and, and it says more. And my refuge, the rock of my strength. I mean, he is the rock of my strength and my refuge are in God. Besides being, uh, besides being the rock, the stone where my strength is, he is also my refuge. So the rock of my strength and my refuge are in God. I'm getting to where I wanted the next verse. Trust in him at all times, you people. The times, they are good. Trust in God. Don't abandon the Lord. Have a close relationship with him. Very close indeed, yes. Because if there is a turn of events and bad things start to happen, he will be your refuge. He will be your God. He will be your protector. So we have to trust in him at all times. Times are bad, we trust in him. It looks like there is no way out, there is. Humankind has already gone through similar crisis and they could get out of it. God is in control of all things. God will help you. And after that, David said the following, a message for me and for you. Pour out your heart before him. This is a very, very important thing. To come to the presence of God and pour out your heart. To open your heart. That's why Jesus said, go into your room, shut your door, 
and to your Father who is in the secret place, talk to him, and secretly he will reward you. You come and pour out your heart. God, I can't take it anymore. Or, or, or I'm lacking power. I'm lacking capability. I'm not prospering at all. I'm not being successful. You pour out everything that you would like to tell him if you had had a personal meeting with him. This is the moment of the meeting. Then open up your heart. Take it all out of your chest. Lord, I've tried so many times, but I couldn't do it. I don't know what is going on. I'm not being wise at all. I'm not being successful. The student might say, I can't learn this subject that will be on the exam, the final exam, or college, or at school. I can't, I can't succeed. I can't succeed in the job interview I've, that I've been doing. When I get there, something bad always happens, and I stumble, and I lose the position. God will change you. Open up your heart. I'm getting old, and I can't seem to find my better half. I need to fulfill myself. Lord, you made me. The man says man, the woman says woman, so I can have my mate or my companion. You, Lord, said a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And that the same, a woman shall leave her father and mother and be joined to her husband. But where, when? This is a very serious step. I don't want to take a wrong step. I don't want to be married just for six months, for six years. I want to marry for life. I need your help. Pour your heart out before God. Tell him about your frustrations if there are any. Tell him also about your successes if they have happened to you. But God, I want to do whatever you want for me. I want to fulfill your plan. I want to fulfill your will. My God, help me, enlighten me. And the more that you pray, the better. When you have, when you have poured out your heart completely to him, when you have cleansed before him, you will feel strengthened and prepared to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. So pour out your heart before him, he, he said. Um, and, and to end this, God is a refuge for us. Before, he had said he was his refuge, and my refuge is in God. I mean, the rock, um, the rock of my strength and my refuge are in God. And now he ends it saying, God is a refuge for me. I mean, I mean for us now. If he is our refuge, why not using him? When we need to, to, to take refuge in him, for what? For him to advise us. To, uh, to straighten up our thoughts, our vision. Maybe, maybe you are being successful, but maybe you're having success, let's say, 10 times, but you might have 30 times more, that same success, 300 times. You might have 60, 600 times more. You might have 100, 1,000 more, which is what Jesus has promised you. God, I want to do something that I can really say, you have helped me. He is a refuge for us and he will help us. Amen, brethren. Later, we will say a prayer at the end so that God may bless all of these people. And speaking of God's blessing, we will see now the real life drama. We're going to see a very serious case and you will see how much a person suffers. I haven't seen this episode yet, but it's always this way and what God has done to bless him. What God has done for this person, he will do for anyone else. So let's take a look at the real life drama now in the name of Jesus. When I was 28 years old, I started feeling some pains. We sought all sorts of alternatives, you know, doctors, you know, we've seen many types of doctors. There were times with the pills when she would go crazy. Sometimes she would talk gibberish and I had to get into the world of hers. They told me I had fibromyalgia, but it is something that they, that for them is incurable. Fibromyalgia is a sort of rheumatism which affects joints, muscles, and tendons, causing pains in many parts of the body. Fatigue, memory loss, lack of concentration, and palpitations are amongst the most common symptoms of the disease, which affects around 5 million people in Brazil. I couldn't sweep the floor or handle the broom. The flat iron, I couldn't handle it. And this movement like this afterwards, I couldn't bear the pain. I could only sleep with pills. Uh, until... Until I think my son's girlfriend said that 
She went to an evangelical church and that there she could be healed. Besides the fibromyalgia, Vera suffers the sequela of a car accident, which injures her cervical spine. I had no safety belt. The car crashed and it caused that trauma. And I couldn't move my arms properly. That was when Dr. Suarez came in the church and I said to my husband, I'm going. And there, thank God, my wife found her healing. With this faith in her heart, Vera Lucia goes to the service ministered by Dr. R. R. Suarez in Madureira on April 23, 2015. At that time, the Holy Spirit heals her completely. How far up could you move it? Well, I could move it this far and then I forced it a little. How about now? Now, glory to God. Oh, glory to God, that's beautiful. I could raise my arm and today I can take care of my home. I do whatever I want. I was ironing just now. Whatever I want to do, I can do. That was the best thing that could have happened in our lives. If there was anything that my family sought, was her healing. God has blessed us. He's given us the healing. We are happy. We are living the next level of our lives. Sometimes I talk to her here in the living room and I look at her and say, Lord, thank God, because we had seen her suffer so much. Now that she's healed, we can go out, we can talk. Now we have a normal life, you know, with all the activities everyone has, getting up early, going to work, all the procedures of a normal family. The peace has come back to our home because we were desperate, let's say, every day, every weekend. And thank God my wife was healed in church, thanks to the Lord Jesus. Delivered by the power of God, Vera leaves a message to all brothers and sisters who are going through the same situation. There are a lot of people today, people who suffer of fibromyalgia, and they accept to say it is incurable, but I don't accept it. I was healed. Now we have to enjoy life, the wasted time, and keep going to church and being close to God and to Jesus. We can only trust in Him. Glory to God. <laughs> My brethren, a testimony like this, when we show it in the countries where the minority, the minority are Christian, where the majority doesn't know Jesus, this causes a tremendous stir. People are amazed, but how can this be? Because only Jesus can operate and He does it. We have to preach a little more. It's like David said, to pour out our soul before him so we can help out our neighbor. Vera Lucia really can now tell every single person. The church was just packed that day. In the midst of them all, Jesus went there and he healed nearly everyone and he healed her as well. That God is good, that Jesus is wonderful. This is the joy we want to, want to see on the face of all of these people. We're not preaching against or in favor of any religion. We are now teaching the truth because when the person knows the truth, the truth sets them free. And that's why God is doing a beautiful work in our country, making people understand it, that through Jesus, they can be healed. You who are listening to us now, maybe you are going through very tough times in your life. Look, I don't understand what is going on. Don't try to understand it, seek God. And when the word is opened up to you as it is open, as, as these messages that David's given to us, pour out your heart before him and start to pour it out. You don't understand. You don't understand it very much, but he is your friend. He's your father. Father, Jesus, I don't know what to do. Open up my understanding so that when you read the Bible and one verse pops out to your eyes and you then understand it, this is the way and I will walk upon it. And you start taking the steps and you will see the doors opening and God will make you to take you that blessing which he wants to make. I've preached the gospel for over 40 years now, but I, I know exactly how long. And since I've converted, I've been talking about Jesus since I was six years old. I've never seen anyone disappointed with Jesus. What I've seen were many people who lied and deceived until an irreversible situation happened, then it was too late. They wanted to open their hearts, but it was, it was no use anymore. Pour out your heart before God. Truly live the way He teaches us to. Seek God and you will find Him. You will be blessed. 
and God will turn you into a person very, very filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with joy. Let me pray for something that, that is hidden in your life now. I'm feeling this in my heart now. Father, I don't know what's, what's hidden in this life which no one knows, but this thing, oh God, is working as a magnet which is attracting the forces of evil. It might be, oh God, a sham, something wrong that this person has done and that they are cheating. Oh God, give strength to this person to deliver themselves of that. Because Jesus, you came so that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. We do not receive or accept anything from the enemy. To the contrary, we really rebuke it now. For your glory, God, it is rebuked. Father, deliver this life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's now open up our hearts, please. Dr. Suarez, I'm getting to know the gospel and I have doubts about many subjects. Is it possible for a demon-possessed person ends up not going to live in heaven? What can we do to cast out the demon from the body of this person? Dr. Suarez, I have trouble understanding the Bible. What can I do? Please give me some counseling. Well, you have to, uh, you have to know more of the Bible first. I don't know if you are saved. You have some doubts there. And by the word of God, I preached it today, right? When you take the word of God, the demons are then cast out. And David, no, that wasn't the message, but how did David open up his heart? There are a lot of things, but you are on a good path. That's what Jesus said to the scribe. You have answered rightly. You're not far from the kingdom of God. Keep on like this, you'll understand it. And this book, Healing the Sick and Casting Out Devils, can help a lot. Shall we rise now so we can pray? Bow your head down and close your eyes. Father, first I'll pray for those people who are at home, who need, oh God, of deliverance, who need healing or who are in the hospital. God, answer those people. I unite my faith with their faith and I rebuke all force of the enemy. And I say, come out in the name of Jesus and do not come back. 